Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this video we're going to make some corrections of things that, um, you know, might have worked specifically for me uh, in my specific examples in these previous couple of videos that I've done, uh, but might not work for, you know, other, you know, you know, kind of edge cases of these programs, um, as well as some stuff that I might have updated kind of behind the scenes and fixed inside of the uh, code itself. Um, all these things were on the CPU side of things, so not actually in the CUDA, the CUDA kernels themselves, but more the CPU functions and CPU calculations. Um, but, you know, let's go ahead and clear that up, and I wanted to make this video just to kind of, you know, make sure that, you know, nobody was left scratching their heads and not understanding why some things happen. We all make mistakes, but it's important that, you know, we recognize that, we move on, and we fix them. So, let's go ahead and look at our first one. So, our first one was actually in vector add. Uh, so, didn't get off to the most auspicious of starts, but let's go ahead and see what we did. So originally when we were doing our thread block calculation, let's zoom in a little bit. So for our thread block calculation, we did um, int num blocks is equal to, um, all we did was we casted uh, as an integer, the result from a ceiling function doing in, which was the number of elements in our array divided by uh, the number of threads per block, right? And this was to figure out how many threads we needed to launch, um, which means how many blocks we need to launch. So um, so what's the problem with this? Well, so the ceiling function returns a double and it can take a double or it can take, uh, it can take a double or it can take a float, um, but you know, it's, it's, it's templated so it can take, um, you know, different types as well. And so in this case, both in and num threads are integers. So what will happen is this, this n divided by num threads will evaluate first, and this is just integer division. So integer division will just truncate and cut off whatever the decimal point is. It doesn't keep a remainder. So if we had, say, 3 divided by 4, which is 0 0.75, the answer would just be 0 because 0 0.75 is a remainder. So in this case, I, it worked for me in this example because, you know, my array size was 2 to the 16. So 2 to the 16 is divisible by 256. So... It, the remainder was always going to be zero, so I never ran into an edge case, um, or I never ran into a case where um, I would launch not enough blocks. So what is a case where I would launch not enough blocks? So one such example is if I did, uh, you know, uh, a, a grid size, or say I had an array that was 257 elements long, so just one more thread uh, needed to be launched past a single block. So how would this look? So what we do is n would be 257 in that case. Num threads would be 256. So this would be 257 integer division by 256. So this would just be one, right? So it'd be one plus a tiny little fraction, one over 256 as a remainder, but it's integer division. So that will get uh, thrown away. And so this would actually result in just one thread block being launched, which isn't enough threads. We need 257 threads at minimum launched and we've only launched 256. So how would, what's the easy way to get past this? The easy way to get past this is just with a little, uh, with a simple cast like this. So if we cast, um, you know, in say as a float, then this turns from integer division to floating point division, and then we're fine, right? Then at this point, we, uh, at, the, at this point we would get the right answer. So this would be um, 257 divided by 256, this would be a floating point number now, and then when we did the ceiling of a floating point number now, it would round up to the nearest whole number. So we can even kind of print this out just to see how this looks. So let's go ahead and show that. So we'll do standard C out, and then we'll do, you know, let's just do the ceiling function of say uh, 257 divided by 256. So this should launch two thread blocks, but it does not, and then let's print a new line character, all right, and then let's print our, our correction, right? So in this case, it would be seal of, cast it as a float, 257 divided by 256, right? And then let's print out another new line character, all right? We have a breakpoint in there, so let's go ahead and rebuild this. So this should take just a second, and what we should see is that this should print out one, so it just drops off the you know the single thread that's left over so it'll be one plus a little bit that little bit gets thrown out 
and then over here the little bit doesn't get thrown out and then the ceiling function takes that and it rounds it up to the nearest whole number so let's run it and let's look at the terminal so here we see right so we get one thread block for the first one that was the original calculation that I had in here, and then uh, two for the next one, right? So that's the simple fix. So what's the cleaner way to do this than having to use a ceiling function, right? And doing all this kind of nasty casting. So you can actually do this a lot more cleanly, which is what I've replaced in the code uh, that you might've seen before I started explaining this. So um, what I have replaced in the code is uh, this calculation right here. So it's n plus num threads minus one divided by num threads, right? And so how does how does this actually work, right? So this works pretty simply. All it does is it will pad out um, however many threads uh, that you're going to launch, uh, and make sure that you know if you launch a partial thread block, it will get filled to at least another full thread block. So let's take that case of 257 elements, right? So n is 257, um, num threads is 256. So this will be 257 plus 256 minus one. So it'll be 255 plus 257. Uh, so that equals 512, right? So it'll be 512 divided by uh, 256, right? So that just gives us two. So in this case, we don't need to even worry about any uh, you know, casting, right? We get the right answer. And so what happens if we have, you know, more than if, you know, say n is not 257, maybe it's 258, 259, 260, etc. So the way this works is that this will be, say, 260 plus 255 is what this rounds, um, this goes up to. And what happens is, you know, basically what we'll get is, say, 2, and then, or uh, what we'll get is this division will end up with 2 and a little bit left over. Uh, and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. But the thing is, it's integer division. So integer division means we just, we don't care about the decimal place, so it'll always go away. And then when we get all the way around to be say, you know, 256 times three, right? So, you know, this won't, uh, we, we don't have to worry, we don't have to worry about, you know, the padding at that point. So what will happen is, you know, let's take the, let's take the simple example of, you know, we're almost at, 1024 total threads launched. Today we're at 1023, right? Uh, and then we're going to 1024 threads. So at 1024 threads, we'll add another 255, right? And so this will be, you know, 1024 plus 255 divided by 256, right? So 256 times four is 1024, just for reference. Uh, and so what will happen here is that that entire 255 will be the remainder. So the remainder will be 255 over 256, but it's integer division again, it just goes away. So this is typically the better way, um, the more standard way of doing this kind of padding. Um, it avoids you having to use a ceiling function and also avoids any casting. So it's nice in that respect. So there's a quick fix from vector addition. So let's close this out and let's open up another example. So another thing that somebody pointed out was inside of our um, matrix multiplication, there wasn't a problem with the kernel itself or the thread blocks. Um, but what ended up being a problem was somebody noticed that within the check result that I was relying on malloc being initialized to zero, right? And so that's a very dangerous assumption. So that's actually undefined behavior. You could be allocated, say a page, uh, or you could be allocated memory that is all zeros. That's possible, uh, but it's not guaranteed. So that's what we call undefined behavior. So this was a case where it was updated uh, back in February on GitHub, but uh, in the video, it still might've confused people. Um, it's just a check result thing, so it has nothing to do with the CUDA itself, but still, um, I figured I'd answer this question as well. So in the actual code that's on GitHub and has been up there since the 22nd, uh, February, um, the way you can get around this is one of two things. So one thing is you can do kind of like we do in the CUDA kernel up here where we have a temp sum and then we'll end up writing that temp sum into C instead of initializing C to all zeros, right? So that avoids just, you know, having basically an entire, uh, you know, entire line of work that's just writing zeros. That doesn't make much sense. Um, Another thing we could have done, right, if we wanted to make sure that what that what was allocated for verify C was all zeros, is we could use um, this uh, C alloc, right? So C alloc does the same thing, 
as malloc accept it initializes it um, it will initialize whatever you allocate to zero for you um, so there's a just a you know a quick clarification there like I said um, there's no there's no difference um, or, or rather there's you know there's no difference if you use C alloc or calloc some people call it um, or if you use this temp sum um, like I said the code was already you know fixed and pushed but it's not in the video so I figured I'd check that out here but you know that's all I've got for today so as always if there's any problems with my code listen sometimes you make some mistakes sometimes you write some spaghetti so you got to call it out you, you know what's most important is that you know we get the good examples out there and we fix all the little bugs so and that's going to do it for this episode um, feel free to check out all the other stuff uh, at github.com slash coffee before arch we've got all the different things I've got a series on GPU architecture now on YouTube and then here's all the CUDA programming stuff so yep always feel free to contact me let me know if you have any questions or any concerns with any of the examples and I'll make sure to get those fixed up if there's any problems so I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day <laughs>